how's it going? Well, I'm doing a lot better than I was yesterday. Not 100%. I mean, physically, I'm doing way, way better than yesterday, so... Anyway, I haven't done a response video in quite a while, and this Steve Shives video was brought to my attention. And, you know, I agree with him on a lot of areas in this video, but there's some areas that I don't, and we'll go into that. One of the most counterproductive and honestly corrosive elements of political discourse is false equivalence. I agree, and it happens a lot. I talk about politics a lot, and I go after conservatives and Republicans a lot, and sometimes I get comments from people who apparently think they're making a point when they say, oh, sure, Steve, you say all this stuff about the Republicans, but I bet you wouldn't say it about the Democrats, would you? Well, no, I wouldn't say the same things I say about the Republicans, about the Democrats. If I could truthfully do that, I wouldn't be a Democrat but I am. I just want to say that I agree with, you know, half of Steve's overall overarching arguments that he's making in this video. I agree that the left is very different than the right. You know, that Democrats are very different than Republicans. Now, neither the Democrats or the Republicans are actually really working on the issues that are important, but, you know, that's a different thing altogether. I agree that the Republican Party lends itself to extremism far easier than the Democrat Party. I'm not saying the right versus the left. I'm talking about Republicans versus Democrats. And that the U.S. right wing's brand of extremism really has no silver lining. Other than the perceived notion of crushing ideas or ideologies that they hate or that they deem destructive. Though if I'm to be fair, some of the activists on the left, some of the extremist activists on the left have that same thing going on, so. But the other half of his argument that you'll see coming up, it'll be coming up in a bit, is that there's no significant authoritarianism coming from the left. And that's where I disagree with him. Both parties are the same is an easily debunked claim made by people who only get away with it because the people they're saying it to are too lazy to be skeptical of it. Both major American political parties have their problems, to be sure, big problems, but one of them, the Democratic Party, is clearly preferable to the other. They're not the same. Well, I mean, preferable to your viewpoints as well as mine, but still. And anyone who says they are the same is either a clueless person trying to sound smart or a smart person trying to mislead you because they assume you're the clueless one. Well, I think a lot of people's arguments, when they try to say they're the same, it's because neither party are really focusing on what's important. They're not really looking out for the people. Neither party is. But they both have their own brand of things, and that's what some of these people don't want to look at. They'll say, oh, well, what difference does that branding make? I'm like, well, it makes a huge difference. It's, it's huge. You know, both parties still suck. But uh, uh, their branding and the things that they each party finds important are radically different from each other. So I agree with Steve about that. But sometimes the folks who make these comments get a little more clever about it. They take it one step further. They don't speak in terms of political parties, but in terms of ideologies. They say, oh, sure, Steve, you're always attacking the far right, but I notice you never attack the far left. Correct. Again, there's the unspoken assumption on the part of people who say things like this that they're saying something particularly insightful and cutting, like they've just nailed my feet to the floor on some critical point. How, they seem to be asking, can I regard those on the far right of the political spectrum as enemies, but not those on the far left? Aren't both groups extremists? Doesn't that make them the same? or at least equally bad? I mean, no. Well, yes, I suppose by definition they are both extremists, if in our visualization of the range of political thought we place them on opposite ends of that range. But are they the same or equally bad? No, I don't think they are. I mean, you're absolutely correct that they're not the same. But are they equally bad? I don't know. It would depend on what kind of perspective you have. 
And my argument is not that leftists are all good and pure people and leftist ideologies are all infallible and would inevitably lead to a better society. That's not what I'm saying. That's not what I believe. Actually, that's exactly what you say later in the video. Leftists are not immune from ignorance or bigotry or ambition. Ambition? Or corruption or any of the other things that lie at the root of inequality, injustice, bad government, and all the other social and political ills that afflict our society. So you think that ambition contributes to inequality? That's just a weird belief, man. It's weird. And I just need to add in about the subject of inequality. What methods are you using to try to get rid of inequality? Because sometimes the methods you use end up creating a worse situation than the inequality in the first place, you know, or you make something more messy than it was, you know, you might not actually be really helping the situation. What methods are you using? And some people don't really think that we should care about that as long as, as long as they're in the, they have their hearts in the right place. It's just like, no, that's that you, you have to pay attention to the way that you're doing it. The USSR was leftist in character, at least to a degree. I was not a fan. Authoritarianism is possible. Well, there are definitely a lot of bossy, authoritarian individuals on the left who really start quite a stink over things. Under leftist modes of thought, it's just a lot more difficult to justify. It depends on what you're trying to justify. If you use statistics to say, hey, you know, uh, we should do this and this because these statistics say such, you know, that's pretty easy to justify, right? And that is one of the fundamental differences between the left and the right, and the big reason why I only have a problem with one of them. I think some of the problem is you don't view some things that are authoritarian as authoritarian. You just, you just don't view it that way. You just, oh, no, equality or, or the message or whatever, and you don't, you don't look at how it affects people. And how authoritarian it is as far as like what people are expected to believe and say. Authoritarianism is a problem no matter which side of the political spectrum it originates from. Authoritarian socialism is a thing, but nowadays those who hold to it aren't really shown much respect. They're dismissed and derided as tankies and shoved off into their own little corner of the movement. Well, yes, I mean, even class reductionists are shunned because they're not pushing the message. That's not how it is on the other end of the spectrum. I'm not saying every right-winger is an authoritarian, or at least a professed one, but most of them seem completely fine letting the authoritarians run the show. It's the opposite of how things are arranged on the left. I mean, it's nice to think that, but if we're being realistic and we're, we're being accurate, both sides suck up to the more extreme elements. Just look at how many Democrat politicians suck up to the extreme people that you see at colleges. On the right, it's the anti-authoritarians who are relegated to their own little corner where no one pays attention to them. Which, in this case, I understand, since the most avowed anti-authoritarians on the right are libertarians who don't deserve to be taken seriously because they're a deeply unserious group of people who regard not being able to buy as many guns as they want for any reason as an intolerable tyranny. Fuck libertarians, they're the loser nerds of the right. They ought to be shoved into lockers and left there. Just sounds like you're not a fan of the right wing in any way. It's the authoritarians who dominate right wing discourse. And right wing politics has had a decidedly authoritarian bent since long before I was born. There are many who have indeed pushed for essentially, you know, maybe it didn't have this name back then, but, uh, you know, they're essentially pushing for Christian nationalism. What can be confusing is that right-wingers often don't speak in frankly authoritarian terms. Quite the opposite. They claim to be agents of liberty. They vow to destroy the overbearing and intrusive government that is invading all of our lives. But in practice, they want to drive queer people from public life. They want to empower police to enforce the law brutally and aggressively, so long as it's not against them. So we should all emulate or strive to emulate, you know, San Francisco, Chicago, Portland, and New York City, where crime is skyrocketing, you know, because criminality isn't being punished. 
with this strange notion that if we don't punish people for smaller crimes, then crime will magically go down. And they want to weaken government authority so that it can be replaced by private authorities, which would be accountable to no one. Well, I mean, their view is that the market should take care of it, which, which is horseshit. And those are mostly Republican policies. I said we're speaking now in terms of ideologies rather than parties. The ideologies on the far right are among the most terrifying and dangerous schools of political thought ever conceived. Indeed. Christian dominionism, white nationalism, Nazism. Authoritarianism is possible from the far left? Well, it's more than just possible, so... It is virtually inevitable from the far right. And when it comes, it brings with it oppression, exploitation, and genocide. Indeed. And just as some people will say about communism, oh, oh, it'll be different this time. Uh, no. Why am I okay with the far left, but not the far right? It's pretty simple, really. If I imagine what the world would be like if people on the far left were able to make it work the way they think it should work, with the exception of the authoritarian leftists who, like I said, are off in their own little corner, that world looks pretty good. See, and you denied that earlier. You just admitted to believing in something that you said you didn't believe in earlier. The side of the left that you don't think is authoritarian, because you, you, don't, you don't address it in a way that it, that it has any negative effect on people at all, it's the notion that people should not be able to favor biology over social constructs, or in favor of basing social constructs on biology. You know, in, some, in many cases, to argue in favor of biology is considered hate speech. And to argue that some things are not biological is also considered hate speech. You must believe in or pretend to believe in and support and, you know, verbally support a very particular worldview. And, and as far as, you know, authoritarian left, I mean, the left believes in a lot of restrictions on behavior. Yes, those restrictions are usually based on data and some and mixed with an ideology versus the right wing which usually just bases it on ideology alone you know in their religious books or whatever but the eventual goal is still a lot of restrictions the goal is not to just regulate how products are created it's to regulate the consumption of those products as well you know it's telling people how they must use those products and the left often wants restrictions on behavior far before the infrastructure is available to warrant those restrictions. Look at the 15-minute city concept. Some cities and towns will have fines and restrictions on traveling well before there are, they actually are truly 15-minute cities. You know, the, the left wants restrictions based on data, based on statistics. The right wants restrictions based on their moral code. So, most of the time, some base it off biology, too. So, they're very different. But to claim that, that one side, it, it, I don't know, just, just to act like it, there, there's, there's no problem at all, no problem. And it's just like, well, I guess. My disagreements with folks on the far left are mostly over practical matters. I'm not an anarchist, but... That's not because I think anarchists are bad people or anarchism itself is a necessarily harmful set of ideologies. I just think it's unrealistic and I don't see how we could possibly get there from here. But if we could skip past the how do we do it bit, which I've noticed a lot of anarchists do anyway, it looks like a better world. What is the point of pondering an impossible utopia? If all practical concerns were addressed and the world worked how most people on the far left want it to work, that's a better world. But you're admitting at this point that you don't seem to care how we get to this supposed goal. That's a world where unnecessary burdens are lifted, where the remaining necessary burdens are shared fairly among all people. Impossible where people are free and equal regardless of their race, religion, ethnicity, nationality, sexuality, gender identity, health, disability, whatever. Well, that, that used to be the goal of, like, liberalism and such, but 
Now it's about, you know, categorizing people and then treating them based on those categories. It's a world I could probably stand to live in. If I imagine what the world would be like if people on the far right got to arrange it their way, it's pretty much a nightmare no matter how you look at it. I fully, fully agree with you. You're going to wind up living in an authoritarian dystopia no matter what. The only difference is where the authority comes from. If the Nazis and those of similar worldviews get their way, it'll be the authority of a despotic and unaccountable government. If the libertarians get their way, it'll be the authority of ultra-wealthy capitalists loosed from even the meager regulations that restrain them today, free to do whatever they want to whomever they want. And let me emphasize, I'm not saying those things will be unintended consequences of far-right ideologies. That's how things would work by design. There are a number of negative things by design from the left. It's just not the same kinds of things. That's the world they want. A world where racial and sexual minorities are either persecuted into invisibility or just straight up mass murdered out of existence. When brought to its extremes, yes, that's true. Where there will always be a lower class and they will always be exploited by the upper class with no protections of their rights. Where public education and public transportation and independent media do not exist. The independent media thing doesn't exist on the extreme of this side or this side. Where healthcare is even more of a commodity than it is now. Ugh, can you imagine? Where there is no minimum wage, no workplace safety standards, no freedom of speech. You're going to attack the, the no freedom of speech thing on the right? Now, yes, they, they would eventually you know, infringe on that too. They, they've made that quite clear. On the left? Come on now. Come on now, there's there's people on the left. It's it's not even necessarily even the extremes. You know, there's a lot of people on the left who think that it should be a crime to seriously offend someone. Come on now. I mean, if you want to take it to extremes, how about re-education camps? No religious freedom, no legitimate elections. Hell, probably no elections, period. I hear that criticism more and more often, and it just doesn't seem realistic to me. I don't, I don't see the right wing wanting to bring an end to elections. It's not a world I would want to live in, even if I were rich enough to escape its horrors. If you want to see what they're up to, uh, just look up Project 2025. And they, they've got this whole big, like, 900-page document that goes into great detail about how they want, if we get a Republican president, what they want to do to solidify a bunch of really, really authoritarian crap. Because I'm not a fucking monster. That's not a flex. I mean, it's a little bit of a flex. Anyway, like I said, it's pretty simple. Though I am sometimes frustrated with people on the left because I find them to be impractical. I just don't think you're looking at the whole picture. I consider them friends and allies because at the end of the day, they are trying to make the world better for everyone. Yes, but how are you trying to achieve that goal? While people on the right are trying to make the world unimaginably shittier for almost everyone. Those are definitely the results of the things that they push, but I don't think that's where they're really coming from. They mainly want order. They want some sort of social order, and they see it falling apart. They don't know what to do about it, so they, they grasp onto these things that, well, we can see the results, and it sucks. They're not the same. The choice between the two is obvious, and pretending it's not doesn't make you astute or incisive or a bold iconoclast. It makes you a fucking doofus. Well, fortunately, I'm not making that argument, so have a joy-joy day.